श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओं श्रुति स्मृति पुराणमालय करुणालय नमा भगवत्दशंकर लोकशंकर आत्मस्वूप बंधु I'm very glad to see all of you. And I am glad to come to Raju and Ram's home. It is something like home coming to me. <laughs> Wherever, whichever home I go, that is my home. So I really mean it. I am not a post-chain. That is how I look at things. And then you are all atmosphere. I mean that also. And I am. I feel very much obliged to all of you because you have come to attend this satsang, thereby showing an enormous courtesy towards this Swami. And so I am grateful to all of you because of that. Welcome. Now let me try to answer a few questions. So I am looking at the question now. So uh, regarding the complexity of the body-mind complex relation. I am still a slave to the sensations of the body and mind. You are judging yourself very harshly. Don't do that. There is body and there is the mind. Okay? And I have you remind yourself. First you question yourself. How do I think and how do I feel? That you question yourself. So being a student of Vedanta, you still think that you are the body. And you feel all the bodily, uh, all the bodily limitations and the qualities as you are on. Then you are doing a great mistake. Your uh, your Vedanta study is nowhere near uh, uh, near the truth. And so I am sure you are not thinking and feeling yourself as the body. Having listened to so much Vedanta. I am very sure you are not feeling that way. You believe in yourself. You do not identify with the body mind. The way worldly people identify. I believe in you. What is your problem? You should believe in yourself. And uh, you examine, see, uh, still uh, there are elements of identification with the body. You, you examine it. You examine how do you feel and how do you uh, think about yourself. You examine. Suppose uh, you look at yourself and still feel that uh, suppose I look at myself and still feel I am a Swami from India and I am an Acharya of Vedanta and all that and you are all my sishyas, if that is how I feel, then that means I am identified with the body mind. It is as simple as that. Then I look at myself. Just before you I am demonstrating. I look at myself. I am before all of you I am looking at myself. Do you feel that way? No, I don't feel that way. I am safe. I don't feel that way. It doesn't even cross my consciousness that way. Therefore, I am uh, uh, I am free. And uh, I feel uh, like a friend with every one of you. You must have noticed it. So I do not feel uh, like uh, some special such thing. I feel just as one with every one of you. If you give a chance, if you want to give me a tradition, I will keep my tradition. <laughs> if you give a chance, I will feel like one with you. So you have to examine. So do you feel that caste consciousness in you? I have to ask myself, am I conscious of the caste? No, I am not. Over. That is as simple as that. Therefore, you should rise above every single bodily identification. Uh, and therefore you should rise above all these upadhis of caste, creed, race, religion, region, etc., etc. By now you must have gone through all that. And I am sure you have a reason above all that. You believe in yourself. That is all you have to do. And then uh, there is one more thing connected to this body-mind identification. Mind becomes sad on and off. If mind becomes cheerful, nobody complains about it. You need not comply. Let it be cheerful. It will not be for any length of time. Therefore, when it is cheerful, let it be so. We need not to stop that also. But when mind is sad, it becomes morose or a bit sad. Uh, somehow it feels let down or down. It feels down. That happens to everybody. Then you should be able to watch the mind 
and uh, you should be able to rise above that state of mind. This is the particular state of mind. It will be there for a while, and then it will change. It happens to everybody. Nobody is an exception. We are all human beings, you know. Therefore, mind is ever changeful. It cannot remain cheerful ever and ever. It is cheerful, then it has to be replaced by sadness or sorrowful. So these things happen. And uh, you encounter uh, a very undesirable situation, therefore you become sorrowful. Uh, so this happens. Only you should not identify with that sorrow. This is, so now the mind is sorrowful and you are aware of that. So are you maintaining that space, the terminal space, or not? You have to check. You have to check. I am sure you are maintaining that inner space. You are not uh, so much perturbed by the events of life. I suppose so. The outer events may not disturb you that much as they do the worldly people. The worldly people are devastated by things that happen in the outer. Whereas uh, the students of Vedanta should have some difference, having studied Vedanta so long. By the way, are you attending Vedanta for entertainment or what? Many people do that. Monoranjan. <laughs> entertainment. Because evening time, you know, you are free and it is not at a time for dinner and sleep. And you have an hour, hour and a half free time. And this weird guy called Swami talks or something. He seems to be talking some sense also on and off. Therefore, why not have some nice session and be done with it? Entertainment. Many people do that. Vedanta, they do like that. For many people, Vedanta is a ritual. The Guru Pada Namaskaram and this and that. They ritualize the reverence they feel for the Guru. They feel means they feel in a very superficial way. If the Guru asks them something serious, they, they say no to that and walk their way. <laughs> in a very superficial way, they feel they don't mind showing some reverence if it doesn't hurt their inner core of samsara. So, they, therefore they ritualize Pada Puja, Guru Stotram, all this ritualized reverence they say. So, that is one aspect of Vedanta which is very unfortunate. It doesn't serve any purpose to anybody. And then another aspect is Manoranjan. So entertainment. People are constantly searching for entertainment because they are empty within. They are very empty. Empty is the minimum I can say. Uh, they may not be empty. They, they may be outright uh, unhappy and insecure. Or empty. <laughs> Therefore they are looking uh, for an escape from this unhappy and insecure state of uh, inner consciousness. Or uh, they are looking for some entertainment to escape this emptiness. Inner emptiness. And sometimes a Vedanta context may provide that emptiness, that entertainment. Particularly so when it is followed by some nice food. That's why this Vedanta is always associated with some sumptuous food, gourmet food. Vedanta and food they go together. And to the extent that the Vedanta lecture hall and the kitchen are side by side with bathrooms in between. People are very cunning, I tell you. Very cunning. Therefore, Vedanta is meant for, it is ritualized, and then it is converted into a kind of entertainment. If that is the Vedanta you are pursuing, it will not have any impact. It will just flow above. I am very sure, I believe in you more than you believe in yourself. And so, uh, somebody told me, uh, are you addressing Uttama Jignasus or Adhama Jignasus? I said, I don't have any such distinction. I am addressing Jignasus only. And I believe in uh, the people who come and attend the class. I believe in them. I don't doubt them. Oh, if I teach Vedanta of higher class, will they get up not? I don't doubt like that. Just teach the truth. Teach the truth. Somebody heard my CD just to assess how this guy teaches. And then made a um, made an assessment. Two people heard, uh, so the series they brought and heard, 
and uh, made, gave, gave report. One, one Swami, one uh, Vedantins report is, this Swami is different. That is the report. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing new about it, I say it myself. <laughs> okay. Then the second report is, this Swami is addressing Uttamadhikaris. Then I said that uh, I don't uh, look at it that way. For me, all are Uttamadhikaris, all are Atmaswarupa, all are Brahma. So the point is, uh, that's why I say, if you are serious about Vedanta, if you are sincere, honest, if you are honest to yourself, it is not about to others, if you are honest to what you are studying, and you do not admit these two pitfalls, namely ritualization and entertainment, these two you keep it at bay, and you are honest about what you are studying, then there will be that inner space. You, you are bound to experience yourself as the witnessing awareness. And there is always a space with reference to the mind. Mind can still bother you, but not that much. There must be some difference. Therefore, believe in yourself. You just ask the question. The events that happen in the outer world, are they perturbing me? Perturbing me? And if so, how much? That is the question you have to ask. You have to ask that question. Suppose I ask that question to myself. In the last decade or five years, let us say five years, in the last five years, the variety of events that were happening around me, about me, did they perturb me? I look at myself and say, no, I am not perturbed. Good. That is what you have to aim. I am not telling about myself. I am telling about the space between oneness, oneself, the witnessing awareness, the savvy, the mind. So that space you must get. That is the purpose of study of Vedanta. Then body. That is the question. I am answering the question. Then comes the body. You should develop a generous indifference towards the body. You should not allow the body become an obsession. The modernity means the civilizational uh, developments, technological developments, etc. They created what is called a lifestyle that can be described as modernity. This modernity has a, a very corrupting influence on people's lives. Now people are the worse samsaris than before industrial revolution. So, for example, people in America are worse samsaris uh, compared with their counterparts in India. India also they are samsaris, but in America they are more samsaris because of uh, the comforts and other uh, things that are there. So as the modernity increases and the life uh, style becomes more and more sense pressure oriented or sense oriented, sense, sense oriented, uh, then uh, the obsession with the body becomes part of people's lives. If you have that obsession with the body, which is the direct result of identification with the body, then you are in serious trouble. You should not be obsessed with the body. You should develop a kind of indifference towards the body. But it is not callous indifference that I am talking about. Are you able to follow what I am saying? Yeah. It is a generous indifference, not callous indifference. Callous indifference means if there is a cut, you don't put any band-aid, etc., oh, it will go, and then it becomes a severe wound and gets infection, and then you go to work antibiotics. That is callous indifference. Generous indifference is, it's okay, cut a band-aid will do the job. Put a band-aid, just wash and put a band-aid and be done with it. That is generous indifference. But suppose you run to the doctor with this cut, that is an obsession, right? Therefore, you have to strike a balance. You should not be obsessed with the body. You should be very cautious with reference to what you eat and what you drink. And uh, you should uh, lead a, a simple, so how else can I describe it? A simple, disciplined and orderly life. That is all you have to do. And you should not get obsessed with the body. For example, you forget about, this I have told already a few times, but again I am saying, 
ಇದು ಹೊರಗಡೆ ಹೋಗಿ ಫ್ಯೂಚರ್ ಕೋಲಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ ಆಗಿ ಗಿವಿಟ್ ಆಗ್ತದೆ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಕೊಲಿಸ್ಟ್ರಲ್ ಕೊಲಿಸ್ಟ್ರಲ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕೊಲಿಸ್ಟ್ರಲ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಕೊಲಿಸ್ಟ್ರಲ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಯು ಪೀಪಲ್ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ಆರ್ ನೋ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ಕೊಲಿಸ್ಟ್ರಲ್ ವಾಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲ ಸೋ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟೆರಾಲ್ ಮಾಲ್ ಸ್ಟೆರಾಯ್ಡ್ ಮಾಲ್ ಕ್ಯೂರ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕವರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಒನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ವಾಸ್ ರಿಜ್ಯೂಸಿಟೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫೋರ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ and then it was synthesized by robert robinson in cambridge university and robert wood in somewhere in america it was synthesized that is what called before that nobody knew cholesterol what is that cholesterol and i was studying all about cholesterol i did not know its connection to the body and the illnesses and all that now even the kids talk of cholesterol so america has given up on cholesterol i don't know whether you people have given up or not but america has given up on cholesterol america has given up on the stent it is not a stent it may be called a stunt you know it is given up america has given up okay america has given up on blocks so you give up these things you just give up you don't need them and uh, give up all concern about the heart okay and the heart attack is the nicest way of leaving the body and you welcome it so develop that kind of an attitude if it is heart attack i welcome it like uh, the god of death we are all students of perfection for us god of death is a brahmanic yajarya for us he is not something to be feared or despised therefore that kind of a um, that kind of a uh, indifference which is uh, supported by understanding uh, so which is scientific not uh, full hearted kind of indifference scientific indifference so you should develop like the heart to do its job you do one thing daily morning you wake up and tell yourself to work hard i will work hard and do that and then when i love all i serve all i love all i serve all i want to show you comes across that is how i live this day these two things you do so first is so working hard and uh, that it takes keeps the body healthy and loving kindness keeps the mind healthy as long as the mind is healthy and the lifestyle is healthy you remain healthy forget about heart and all that all these tests uh, everything you give up so that kind of a generous indifference towards uh boy you must be generous knowledgeable yet indifference towards the body you should develop that is the way you have to create a space with reference to the body i am sure you must be doing it this is the question okay so i have used the question as an occasion to describe some important aspects of your existence so i am sure you remain a witness to all, all these things you are not helpless you atman atman mudharet don't depend upon others for help never you you help yourself so atman atman mudharet that is what shri krishna said you help yourself be a light unto yourself that is a quote of bhagavan buddha be a light unto yourself that's why he said wake up in the morning and tell yourself i work hard the whole day i work hard i love all those who pull my leg also i love all i was standing somewhere somebody was digging a hole behind me and then some sound i heard and so he is digging a hole just behind me i said what are you doing i am making a hole for what you will fall in it god bless you make it a good hole you like that Be like, be like the loving kindness. You do that. As long as you do that, you will not become sick. You know, you are not a person. You are. Uh, you started your humans, not you generally. You started your life. Every one of us has started life as a single cell in the mother's womb, single cell. And now you are uh, a conglomerate of, let us say. approximately 50 trillion cells that is what you are okay and so you are a bunch of cells 50 trillion of them 
What is a cell? Did you ever see a cell under a microscope? Very sad. Many people did not see it. I have seen it. It is there in YouTube and all that. Even otherwise also I have seen it. So what is a cell? You look at it. I sometimes I have a complaint. In the medical school, they start studying medicine with a dead body before them. अरे डेड बॉडी से क्या फोड़ोगे भाई सो इंडस्ट्रीड ऑफ लर्निंग है स्टार्टिंग विद डेड बॉडी थर्ड ईयर एंड फोर्थ ईयर मेडिसिन इज ऑल अबाउट डेड बॉडी सो थर्ड ईयर दे विल पुट ए डेड बॉडी देयर एंड देन फोर्थ ईयर आल्सो डेड बॉडी दैट इज द मेडिसिन दे स्टडी लुक एट वंस आई वेंट टू व्हेन आई वाज इन द यूनिवर्सिटी आई वेंट टू मीट माय फ्रेंड नेक्स्ट डे इज एग्जाम एनाटॉमी therefore he is seriously studying that night he has to study because he was uh, roaming here and there uh, all through the semester and now next day morning anatomy class he has to attend and uh, he has to write and then uh, uh, oral also will be there and uh, so he he purchased one head and he put it on the table and the read sit and uh, left lobe left lobe right lobe head uh, so one head Uh, it is available for sale in India. These things are there. You can go and purchase it from a watch company. Here it is a big deal, legal, illegal, and all that. But not in India. We don't live by law. We live by dharma. Our is dharma civilization, not legal civilization. We don't care for law. Therefore, that is what he was doing. I told him, "Hey, what are you doing? That don't talk now. I am don't disturb me. You tell me what it is. A human head. Get out." So I went out. Therefore, this is how they study medicine with a dead body. <laughs> Now, doctors must be very angry with you. <laughs> you don't know. You 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 start with the study with a living cell apart. Huh? Look at a living cell. When you look at a living cell, you see a few things. Cell wall, you see. So the material thing, it is anomaly of Osha. You see that cell wall. And if you carefully look at it, some protoplasm, some fluid inside the cell wall. Even cell wall has a two. It is, it is a, you can see the uh, in outer cell wall and inner cell wall. You can see it means it is a reasonably thick cell wall. And then there is protoplasm, some fluid in it. And they say protoplasm is the all life is the protoplasm only. That is what they say. I don't know much. Then there is a nucleus and a few other things. It is a factory, and you see the cell wall, and then you see the power of life in that cell. Life is going on, and between as you are dekte dekte, even while you are looking at it, it can become to dekte dekte. So, kya se kya ho gaya dekte dekte? There is a song like that. Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan. You are saying, "Kya se kya ho gaya? Dekhte, dekhte." Oh, masoom thi. Oh, ladki masoom thi. Masoom samajh hai. Masoom means innocent. I don't know. Innocent. But oh, nahi masoom nahi hai. So, kya ho gaya? Kya se kya ho gaya? Dekhte, dekhte. So, like that, that cell it divides. It becomes two. And as it is becoming two, these twenty-three pairs of chromosomes they divide, and they get uh, distributed. And lo and behold, again you have one full cell, another full cell here. What is going on? This is the wonder of wonders. That is life. Life it is. Therefore, you are the life, Anna. You are not the material thing. You are life. Prana, you are prana. Then, uh, if you examine the self of that, it is very intelligent. It thinks. The self thinks. Under, uh, it is very intelligent. Uh, so, when it comes uh, nearer the other self, it goes and makes friends with that other self. It thinks. Apparently, it thinks. If you examine uh, the 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 operation of the cell, if you carefully examine, you can see that the cell is very intelligent. It thinks, and uh, it it functions very correctly, and uh, so perfectly it functions. 
and then finally, that is the Manohaya and Vijnanohaya I have covered, and finally, the cell is all love. These cells, these fifty trillion cells, they love. That is what Anandamaya, they love. That's why the blood cells, the red blood cells, love every the cells of every organ. They supply oxygen and they supply nutrients. And then the cells that line the stomach, they love all the body, therefore they absorb the nutrients and supply. And uh, so the brain cells, they love the entire body, they supply the right kind of uh, messages and the chemical messengers, etc. they supply. And when there is a, a, some bear comes suddenly in the way, then uh, every cell loves this entire body to, to keep it alive. Therefore, immediately, whether it is kidney or some other organ, religious adrenaline, and there is a fright reaction, the entire sympathetic nervous system kicks in and the person runs away. And that, that is how the cells are loving each other. They love, love, love. Love is their, their uh, inner core, their cells. <coughs> and now when you hate somebody, then the cells are confused. They don't know what is hate. The cells do not know hate. They only know ananda. Love. Ananda is love. Ananda is not coffee, drinking coffee, and feeling love. That is not ananda. That is sense of pleasure. So ananda is love. And the cells is love. You look at the cells in your body. So some cells secret insulin. So that the glucose is metabolized. Uh, so some other cells secret enzymes like pepsin, etc., uh, that digest all kinds of food that you eat. Even if you abuse the tummy with all kinds of uh, wrong food, the cells love the tummy so much that, that they continue to uh, digest it and uh, metabolize it. And uh, the, the cells, they have only one thing in their core that is love. The cells are material, they are prana, they are manaha, they are vijnana and they are ananda. That is what the cells are. And when you start hating somebody, the cells get confused. And in their confusion, they create a system, a thing called autoimmune disease in the body. What is the confusion? The hatred is that. Hatred is you work against somebody else. Now cells get that thing, hatred. And therefore, they start working against other cells. That is called autoimmune disease, right? So the certain cells work against other cells. That is autoimmune disease. So like that, your immunity levels will come down. As you start hitting, your immunity will come down. And now you are vulnerable to all kinds of diseases. Therefore, you wake up, decide to work hard, and uh, choose to love or loving-kindness meditation. I do loving-kindness meditation with a lot of enthusiasm and love. It must be there in that book also. And I do it every session I do it because I know its importance. Sometimes uh, I wonder whether I am able to convince the importance of loving-kindness meditation to the students. I am not sure. Therefore I talk a lot more about it. I am a bit self-assured. So I wonder whether these people, oh, this is coming from Buddhist literature, this is Swami, is a Buddha Swami, whether we should go, this is Sapravaya, Atmata, this kind of nonsense people have in their heads, they are all conditioned. So that's why I push this loving kindness meditation their way. And I noticed that I am not pushing hard enough, because loving kindness meditation is the discovery of Bhagavan Buddha himself. And in Dhammapada and in other texts, he gives us so many facets of that loving kindness meditation. He describes five facets of loving kindness meditation, whereas I am doing only one. So sometimes I feel like pushing the other four also. So make love the integral part of your existence. You exist is same as you love. You love the same as you, you, you love all. Even physical things also you love. 
For example, this cup, you put it carefully there. You don't put it with a thud. Because it will break otherwise. Therefore, you love the cup also. You love everything. You do not love, there is nothing that doesn't deserve your love. You close the door carefully, not with a bang. So you, you, a car, you love the car, use it properly. Like that, you love even uh, insentient objects, you love what to speak of. Living beings, don't hurt a plant, don't uh, pluck a flower, don't uh, pluck a, a, a leaf, don't hurt the plant, don't break the, the branch, smaller bit, don't do any such things. Love all. Love and love and love. You do this much, your cells will not know what is hatred. They continue to work in unison, with perfect coordination. And you live into old age a happy and healthy life. You follow? So, this is how you have to do. So that it is not difficult. So that is the first question. Why you say I am helpless? You are not helpless. Your cell is your guru. So you live your uh, full potential. You are potentially divine. You, you, you manifest it and be happy. It is in your hands. It is in your hands. It is not in some guru's hands. Because people believe like that. That's why I am saying it. It is not in some God's hand. Because God the other. It is not in the uh, God's God the other waiting to be praised by you. And you praise the God, which is called carrying favor with the God, and the God will selectively reward you. Who told you? You are living in some fancy world, I tell you. So, it is not like that. You should be better, uh, you should know better than that. Am I sounding like a philosopher now or not? Earlier I did not sound. Now am I sounding like a philosopher? Do you agree? Okay. So I have held by held by the bhiksha today. So Ramahudra Jajya said that Ham Bhik Mante hai. Wo to blind swami aisa aisa bolta hai. Ham Bhik Mante hai. Bhik Mangana hamara parama dharm hai. Like that. So I, I, I fall into that category. Okay. So then naturally this question is adequately answered. Next question. What kind of sense, feeling of I am we would experience with I am indifferentiated? This we will come in the next class we are coming. If you have any question, please don't hesitate one second. Shoot. So, because all these questions are about that class. Uh, sometimes it is hard to tell if it is a binding desire or simple one. Can you please define? There are no binding desires, there are no simple desires. There are only desires, and desires are poison. Okay, don't categorize the desires like that. Nobody categorizes them. Sri Krishna did not categorize like that anywhere. So, he said, Sarvan partham novata, prajahati yada kaman, sarvan partha novata. They come in the mind. They are the desires, kaman. And uh, Sarvan, all of them, Prajahati, gives up. There Shankara talks about Pra. Jahati means gives up. Ohak Tyake, there is Dhatu. And so Jahati is, uh, it is a Divati, it is Juhotyatikana. So uh, to give up. That Pra means completely lock, stock, and barren. That is the meaning of Pra. Give up all the desires. Then uh, the desire for uh, Moksha is there. Mumukshatvam, it is provisional. Unless you give up that desire also, you will not get moksha. You have to give up that desire also. Giving up the desire for moksha also, even for moksha, it is called yoga. Siddhya Siddhyo Samobhutva Samatvam Yoga Uchyate. Samatvam Yoga Uchyate means that you have to give coffee or tea, it is okay with me. That is yoga. That is the Samatvam. Uh, so, Uchitani, whatever kadris, two, three kadris you have made, uh, they are all equanimous to me and I am Sama. That is not yoga. You have to see Vashya there. So, Vashyakara says, Siddhya Siddhya Samo Bhutva. What is the Siddhi in the context of uh, Gita, that uh, topic? Uh, what is the Siddhi? Moksha is the Siddhi. 
their siddhi is not having a good dinner, that is not the siddhi, or making good money, that is not the siddhi. The context you have to see, it is somewhere in the Sankhya Yoga, in the middle of the Sankhya Yoga. Their siddhi is only one thing, that is moksha. So, the desire for the moksha, the moksha I will get, that is siddhi. I may not get moksha, that is a siddhi. Therefore, when there is a desire for moksha, you cannot be equanimous, sama, with reference to moksha and no moksha. So as long as you desire moksha, and therefore you want moksha, you do not want no moksha, siddhi and asiddhi, that means you are not equanimous, you are inclined favorably towards moksha, and you hate absence of moksha, therefore you are not sama, you will not get moksha. <coughs> So you have to reach a point and declare, I am ever liberated. Liberation is my swarupa, nitya muktaha atma. It is not to be liberated. Therefore, moksha comes or moksha does not come. It makes no difference to me. I am equanimous to both. That equanimity is called yoga. Yoga means combining, coming together. That takes you into the embrace of Brahman. That is the meaning of that verse. Now from that what did you infer? Even the desire for moksha, if you see the bhashya there you can see all that. In brief, bhashya will be very brief, I am explaining elaborately. Even the desire for moksha is an obstacle for moksha. Therefore you have to give it up. But then mumukshutvam, that is provisional, provisional, abhyupakamyaoktam, provisionally it was told. Therefore, even the desire for moksha has to be given out. What to speak of all other desires? Therefore, simple desires, complex desires, who you don't have any desire. Every desire is complex. There is nothing simple about desire. A desire makes you an inadequate person. A desire makes the other important. The other is asap. It is unreal. That becomes important. You are the real, but you forget your real nature in desiring the other. And the other is jada, and you are chetana, you forget all that. And so you become jada in desiring the jada, insentient. Therefore, desire is bad, nothing simple about it. It distorts your understanding of yourself very badly. Therefore, nothing simple about it is very complex. And then every single desire is a binding desire. Not that some desires are binding, some are non-binding, there is no such thing. Every single desire is binding desire. By now you must have got the message that even the desire for moksha is a binding. Then what to speak of other desires? Therefore stop categorizing desires. The one who categorizes desires wants to keep the desires. Right? He wants to keep the desires. That's why he categorizes the desires. Some simple I will keep, complex I will give up. So what are the simple desires? Me, my wife and my children should be always happy. Others, neighbors, etc. we don't care, but we should be happy. And uh, so, inflation in America should be less. Inflation in Africa, etc. we don't care. So, in, uh, so like that. So, these are some only a few desires. So, desires by Enough I have said. Therefore, this kind of a categorization, we don't come across anywhere, this kind of categorization. So I advise, so, to give up, give up all lock, stock and barrel. Prajahati yada kama, sarvan parthama mogatan, atmanye vatmana sushtaha, sthita prajna stado chiyate, vishthita prajna, yada sarve pramuchiyate, kama yesya hrvishritaha, bhavati hiyatra brahma Does it sound like you have heard that? It is from Kathopanishad and also from Brahmarani Kathopanishad. You give up all the desires, only one condition, you give up all the desires. They are not in you, they are in the mind. Hridishya, hridi buddhavsthita, like manogatan, they are not in you. They are not in you. Why, why not uh, give up? Easy to give up. If it is there in you, become difficult to give up. There is a proverb in Telugu. This man started uh, doing charity 
with the with the mother in law's money. <laughs> so that kind of a thing. <laughs> so that kind of a thing. They are not in you, these desires are not in you. They are in the mind. You give up. If they are in you, you have to struggle to give up. They are not in you. They are in the mind. You are falsely falsely identifying with the desires and all that. Give up. And uh, so uh, then what happens? Atra Brahma Samashnyate, Athamatyo Mruto Bhapati. You give up the desire to live. You give up the desire for uh, long life. You give up the desire uh, for heaven. You give up the desire for uh, pressures. You give up the desire for wealth. Every single desire is given up. Then uh, the mortal becomes the mortal. Then and there. Atamatyo Mruto Bhapati. He need not go to heaven, etc., to become one with Brahma. Atra Brahma Samashtinate. Therefore, these two verses you have to keep in mind and put aside all these desires. Why desire? Desire makes you small. Desirelessness is godliness. Did you not hear that? Desirelessness is godliness. What happens is, eh, you make the God the other. Okay? And give a form to that God. Why you give a form to that God? Because you believe that you have a form. And what kind of form you give to that God? The form that you have, something similar, you give to the God. And make the other. And so now you worship that God and praise that God. So that that God will fulfill your desires. Kya baat hai bhai? Ye kya chal raha hai? Ye to vedanta nahi hai. Ye to karmakanda ka baat hui hai. So this is not vedanta. Kya kare? So you have to swim against the current. Edurita. The Vedanta is always swimming against the current. Very unfortunate. Is there a difference between Vairagya and Viragya? You see, Viragi is the one who has Vairagya. Vairagya is dispassion. You don't have passion for the worldly things. You use the worldly things, but don't have passion for the worldly things. You drink the water from a cup, but don't assume that the cup must be silver, made of silver, and my cup nobody else should touch. That is called passion. I was drinking the water from a cup. Then a person said, oh, that is a silver cup. I did not notice that it is a silver cup. <laughs> I said, oh, is it silver? I don't need silver. Uh, but anyway, uh, some cup is there, I am taking one. No, no, you saw me, you give that silver cup to me. Take it. Paper cup is enough for us. Because you don't drink the cup, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is called my idea. No, no, this cup is mine. This plate is mine. This cup is mine. This chair is mine. The stable is mine, and I sit here always with this plate, and with this cup, with this spoon, and this is mine. That is called raga. Okay? You should not have raga. You should be able to declare, nothing is mine. There is no mine. That is called vairagya, the absence of raga. You see, what you call mind eh, is a jada, insentient. Okay, it, has, it doesn't deserve to be called mind. Hmm? Table. Table is a jada, it is insentient. You are a chaitana purusha. You are the sentient being. Okay? And uh, you desire uh, the table, you call the table mind. What a misfortune. You should not do such a mistake. Because you are losing your status of Chetana Purusha by calling the Jada as mine. You should not do that mistake. Suppose you call it mine, then you develop attachment to that Raga, attachment to that. And once you have attachment to the table, then it follows with the aversion. Whosoever spoils the table, you will be averse to that person, etc., etc. So Raga followed by 
dvesha. So you are caught between Raga and dvesha. That is called samsara. So what is vairagya? No raga on any object. No raga. Why no attachment? No attachment. Why? Because it is jada and it is not mine. I may use it, but it is not mine. That uh, spirit, it is not a belief. You see it like daylight. Like daylight you see it. That it is not mine. Nothing is mine. Even the body is not mine. I, you see it like daylight. That kind of a, the way you think and feel, this is what I was saying the other day also, the way you think and feel, I think it is mine and I feel it is mine. I think it is mine means I look at it, it is mine. I feel it is mine means I take it up, keep it close. That is, the, that is how it goes. So the way you think and feel, that defines whether you have raga or the opposite of that. The opposite of raga is vairagya. Vairagya is essential for viveka. Without vairagya, you cannot do viveka. Viveka is who am I? That is the viveka. Unless you have vairagya, if you keep the raga for the insentient things in place, the viveka vichara cannot move forward. Then vairagya becomes entertainment. I told you, manoranjan ho jata So, he, he does a good viveka, manoranjan. Manoranjan Vedanta becomes without Vairagya. So, these are very weighty things and people have to pay attention to them. And so that is Vairagya. Okay, the one who has Vairagya is called Viragi. Viragi. That is the person. So, between Vairagya and Viragi. Vairagya is the quality, Viragi is the person with that quality. But I see the word Viragya. Viragi is not the right word. Make it Viragi. Okay. Now, if you have any questions, please just shoot. Here is a question eh, which fits into the same topic. The question is, eh, you always say the body is in the mind, the mind is in Chaitanya. That I say that. In fact, you ask anybody. Sometimes even Vedanta teachers also fall into this trap. What is that? There is the body. And inside the body there is a mind. And in the mind, Atma is there. Okay? This is Dvaita it is. Vaita Charyas, I am not saying name, Vaita Charyas, they described Atma as Anu. It is a tiny, uh, tiny particle like thing, Anu. So it is like the nucleus of a cell. Where is the nucleus of the cell? There is the cell wall. And inside the cell wall there is protoplasm. And inside the protoplasm, somewhere approximately in the center, there is the nucleus, right? So similarly there is the body. And inside the body there is a mind, and inside the mind there is Atma. This is Dvaita it is. Okay? Everybody believes this. And that's why when somebody dies, the body remains here, the mind has gone somewhere, and the Atma which is sitting in the mind has gone along with the mind, and it will go somewhere else. This is the law of transmigration and all that. All this is a abhyupakamya ukta. If it is said somewhere, it is said somewhere in Gita. Abhyupakamya ukta. Because Arjuna is not ready to understand what is being said, it was said like that. For a different purpose it is said, provisionally. That is not correct. You see, there is part, and there is space inside the part. Is it correct? It is not correct. It is wrong. Because the uh, space is ever there. What came later? Before what came also there was a space. And the space is outside the part, space is inside the part. And in and through the part also space is. So you have to say part is in space. You cannot say space is in the part. If a space is inside the part, uh, then there should be no space outside the part. It is like water is in the part. 
So what is inside the pot, not outside? Outside it is all dry. Then you can say water in the pot. Can you say that kind of a thing, that kind of a statement about the space? You cannot. It is obvious that you cannot. So, because space is outside the pot, inside the pot, in and through the pot. Atma is always like space. Please remember, Atma is always like space. Akasha Iva, in some places Upanishad says, Akasha Vata Sarvagataschya Nityaha. That is Upanishad. In Gita also, Akasha Vata, in the 13th chapter, Atma is compared with Akasha, Akasha Vata. Then man, Atma is a, sometimes called Akasha itself. It is a, the space of awareness, Chida Akasha, that is the Atma, the space of awareness. Okay. Therefore, uh, Atma is like space, you should remember that. Everything is in this space. Space is not in something. Everything is in this space. Therefore, there is Atma, space like awareness. And a movement in that space like awareness, like a movement in water, becomes wave. A movement in that space like awareness becomes the mind. So, wave is in the water. That is the right way to say. You can say water is in the wave, but that you have to say in a qualified way. Wave is in the water, right? Water is the adhisthana for the wave. Wave is not adhisthana for water. Water is the adhisthana for the wave. Similarly, Chaitanya, Atma is the adhisthana for the mind. Okay? And the body, what is between body and mind? Between body and mind? You see, you say, mind is in the body. Wrong. Mind is not in the body. Okay? Mind is not in the brain also. Mind is different. Brain is different. Brain is the body. Mind is not the body. Mind is the consciousness, the knowing quality in you. That is the mind. Mind is, a, Shankara describes, mind is, a, entire body is inside the mind. Therefore, the volume of the body is the volume of the mind. Okay? So, brain is also controlled by the, is in the mind only. The foot is also, underneath the foot also, it is in the mind. The sense of touch which you have on, on the feet, that is also included in the mind. So, mind is the consciousness. Another name for mind is the consciousness. Okay? And therefore, Body, you are conscious of the body, right? You are conscious of the body when you wake up. Therefore, body is an object of consciousness, which is you. Therefore, body is in the mind. Mind is in the Atma. So now let me conclude. As long as you think that there is the body, and mind is inside the body, and Atma is inside the mind, so long you will not understand what is Atma. Self-knowledge is not for you. Vedanta is all manoranjan for you. Okay. The day you understand that there is Atma, space like awareness, and there is movement, which is the mind, and the body is merely an idea in the mind, when you understand that, you are free already. Body is an idea in the mind. You examine your own experience, you are the proof. You have the body only when you think of the body. Is it not so? It is so. You have the body only when you think of the body. When you are not thinking of the body, you don't have body. Right. The soccer players, sir, they don't have legs, sir. <laughs> if they have legs, sir, they are thinking of the legs, sir. He will be sitting outside. He will not be playing soccer. They don't have legs, sir. When somebody hits the leg, then only he thinks of the leg. They don't have legs. They have the ball and they have the prana shakti to push the ball into the pole. They don't have legs. You got the point? Or they, will, or they will be thinking of my legs, my legs, my legs. Will he be able to play a soccer? This my legs, my legs. Therefore, you don't, you have a body only when you think of the body. That's why I advised you. From today onwards, Stop thinking of, give up. Thinking of what? Kulishtira, the list of tent, and the blocks, and the heart. 
Stop thinking of this one and live happily. Very simple. Live happily. If you catch hold of ten school going children, ten of them, and do angiogram to all of them, is it angiogram, right? You will find blocks at least in half of them. So now what will you do? So, no, no, there is a block, it doesn't matter. Body finds, the heart finds another way. There are two, corona, corona, what do they call? Corona arteries. Corona arteries. Not corona? Corona arteries, two of them. The left one and the right one. Like two branches of a tree. Right? And then these two branches have some branches again, branch, 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 branch. That is how it is. Therefore, if there is a block in one branch, body finds a way to send the blood through another branch. Therefore, heart will be all right. You see whether you keep the heart in good shape or not. If you start hating somebody, you are spoiling the heart, not the block. Not the block. Block won't do any harm to you. <coughs> Let it be there. You will live uh, your full length of life with all the blocks. Block won't harm you. If you start hating somebody, that hatred will harm you. Block won't harm you. Therefore give up. This whole terminology you give up and live happily. How is this? Yes, I started in this trip. <laughs> so, that question is answered. If you have any further questions, please shoot. Here these questions are based on Dr. Maharshi. But because none of you are shooting any questions, I am coming to another question. Science unites people by religion divides. Very true. You are all the proof of it. You all came here because it is the science which unites. Right? You became Americans. Who made you uh, Indo-Americans? What is it that made you Indo-American? Dr. Sahib Boli. Science. Right? You are a Hindu. These people are Christians. You are Indian. These people are the Americans, but you are united. What is it that united? Science. Science united you. The medicine that you study back in India, it is the same medicine here. That's why you came here and you flourish like a medicine man. Whereas the religion back in India is not the religion here that divides people. The religion divides people. You can see that. Within India, some more of the, this uh, seems to have uh, uh, seems to have clicked. You know what is the secret? You know that carbon dioxide most of it goes away. Then what remains with a little carbon dioxide that uh, feels good. Good. Therefore, uh, religion divides people. Within India, within India, the need not come to America. Within India, religion divides people. For example, the entire Tamil Nadu is divided between Ayers and Ayers. <laughs> they coexist. They coexist. They don't unite. They coexist. Why they coexist? Majburi hai. You know Majburi <laughs> So, as long as the things are going smoothly, then let the coexistence happen. It is like Vishnu Shiva temples in this country. The Pujaris coexist. They do not love each other. In fact, they hate each other. They coexist. Because both want dollars. Religion is uh, connected with money. It is all commerce. And most of it is commerce. <coughs> the, the popular religion, the religion practiced by masses, is invariably having commerce as an important element. There is some bhakti, some devotion, some that, but those elements are there. But commerce as an important element is always present to that. Did you ever see the meeting of the committee members? What, what is it that they discuss? Money only they discuss. 
वट इज दी का सक्षम सपोज यू डू भगवान मैरिज हाउ मच मनी वो आर लाइक यू टू गेट भगवान मैरिज दीज पीपल इनका मैरिज का ठिका तो नहीं है मैरिज करेगा दीज पीपल आई टेल यू मोर मन so religion divides people religion is what belief belief divides people science doesn't divide people philosophy doesn't divide people my classes i you have already admitted that i am a philosopher reluctantly you admitted <laughs> okay so the classes vedanta classes are not my classes vedanta classes are attended by all the shades of people white people black people Europeans and uh, South Americans, everybody attends the class because the philosophy is also science. So Sophy is knowledge, Phil or Philo is love, love for knowledge that unites people. My friend is from Chile, from uh, Chile. He is my friend. What is that united me and him? Philosophy. Similarly, science. Our doctors are bucks with other doctors. They are all. Americans, they work together in a group. What is it that unites them? Even Pakistani doctors and Indian doctors, they work together. Back in India, they fight with each other, but here they work together. What is it that unites them? Science. So religion divides people. Science unites. It is our experience. So science unites people, meaning that it recognizes everyone is a human and no more further division. You see. You go on explaining what you have to explain. The fact remains that science unites people and religion divides people. Okay, that is very simple. NASA and ISRO they work together. It is the science of uh, rockets and uh, space that unites people, not uh, not uh, uh, beliefs. Okay, so ISRO and NASA work together. Because uh, Israel people do puja before sending the rocket, is that so? No, not for that reason. That is their interest. These people make their own puja; they make their own puja. That is not what unites them. The science of it unites. Now you want to explain it, you explain. Sometimes uh, too much of uh, rationalization, too much of explanation is also not necessary. It's a fact of life; it is there before you. So. Vedanta is not religion. It is not religion. If it is religion, it will divide. Suppose you push Veda religion into Vedanta. Suppose that is what they do. Kichri bana dete, aviyal bana dete, karma, upasana, jnana, and yoga make an aviyal of that. Then that divides. You can see that it divides. So, so, therefore, they are divided now. They are ta- they are studying some Vedanta. Vedanta is like uh, you put uh, some cherry on the top of the ice cream. You know that is the Vedanta. Below all of that is uh, sugar, not good for health. Somebody offered me ice cream. I said, just wait. I pulled out the cherry and I go home <laughs> because all of that is uh, silly. This sugar is not good for health. Intense sugar we should not consume. A little sugar is okay. Uh, that uh, intense sugar that is ice cream. Um, so uh, therefore, uh, when uh, you push non-Vedanta, uh, the religion into Vedanta and try to make a mix, uh, that divides. People are divided. They don't uh, gel together. They fight with each other. Permanently, whole life they will be hurting with each other. It is not their fault. The fundamental thinking is wrong. That you try to mix religion with Vedanta. In Vedanta, you are the God. You are the God. So Shankara said in the last year, I have explained this. So kanyam udvahitam varam utsevhitam 
கன்யாங் நோக்வாஹி இந்த ஆவர்த்தி ஆவர்த்தி ரசபிரதேஷாத் எதற்கு பிரம்மசூத்திர ஜெர் தரிஜ வாக்கிய கன்யாம் வரம் சேதரித்தும் கன்யாம் நோக்வாஹி தே கிவ் திஸ் கேர்ள் இன் மேரேஜ் டு ஹிம் நாட் டு கில் ஹிம் ரைட் அட் தே டூ தட் யூ கிவ் தி டாட்டர் இன் மேரேஜ் டு ஹிம் அண்ட் ஒன்ஸ் தி மேரேஜ் இஸ் கன்சூமேட்டட் you kill the person do they do that they don't do that therefore shankara says in vedanta never ever offer a god other than the atma because by offering a god other than atma to be worshiped by these people you are striking at the fundamental oneness of atma and god atma and brahma the fundamental oneness you are striking at and the example given by shankara if you care to study these things the example given by shankara is varam utsedhayitum kanyam nodvahayanti that is the example given therefore you offer a god who is other than you that, that is what uh, the guru does and then uh, what atma what is that they start therefore always i say if you notice the god that you worship in the temple the god that you have darshan in the temple please make note he is never separate from your innermost self please make note that otherwise your temple visit has no value whatsoever i say this this is misinterpreted by people that i am against the temple i am against the temple in which the god is other than you yes i am against in which the god is other than you that is not vedanta therefore uh, so the religion it divides people fundamentally it divides people because it is a belief system belief divides people you believe in one way and one way and i believe in another way and these beliefs they divide people because there is no thinking behind the belief the th- belief goes with no thinking so thinking he put a lid on thinking that naturally every 100 miles if you travel the beliefs vary and uh, what is a belief what i believe in is the truth and anything else is uh, the untruth that is the belief okay so naturally it divides that is what is science what we studied back in india in a village what we studied back there it is the same in america i noticed that i was studying a carbon valency was four in india but when i come to america where it becomes three or five no it doesn't become it remains three only the sorry it remains four only silicon is a non conductor a semiconductor in america the blessed thing is still semiconductor in silicon valley also so therefore that is how things happen so anyway there is a long question i took a small part of it still there lies an inherent division in science that each of our individual body mind systems and does not attempt to, to dissolve the boundary in any way that's why science is the study of nama roopa and you have to supplement the study of science with the study of philosophy which is higher science so not just a material science you should not stop with material science you have to you have to add supplement material science with philosophy the science of atma it is what vedanta is vedanta is not religion of atma it is the science of atma so we ragana thanda used to uh, like roar like a lion vedanta is the science of atma we i am from uh, hyderabad dogal kuda where ramakrishna mission is there and this topi is also presented to me by the ramakrishna mission chief only <laughs> therefore uh, that is how ragana thanda used to roar it is the science is the philosophy and the science they go together therefore i always maintain unless you know some physics about the space science space time there are continuum they are not two different things 
some physics, some idea of physics you should have. Then only you will understand Vedanta. Otherwise you cannot understand Vedanta. Therefore, Vedanta is science. Do you know, Newton published his laws of motion, three laws of motion, in Journal of Philosophy. That was the journal in 1640 or 50. Journal of all scientific discoveries up to in 18th, 19th, 20th century, they were all published in Journal of Philosophy. You know, Einstein published in Journal of Philosophy. So because they loved, they, they knew that science and philosophy are one and the same, as the name suggests, philo love for knowledge, Sophie. That is what science is. Therefore, we come across some of these weird Vedantins. We have them in India, a gang of Vedantins, car market gang of Vedantins. Some of them, they say, science is not pramana. Vedanta is pramana. That is what they talk. They don't know. They just talk from the hat, not knowing anything. Imitation. Head something somewhere and just blabber it. Science. Vedanta is science. There is the science of Atma. There is science of brain called neuro, neurology. There is science of heart called cardiology. There is science of the Atma called the philosophy or Vedanta. Therefore, they are not contradictory. They supplement each other. The way these days, these variations of genders, their classifications and importance that is being kept on it by economic, scientific, and that, you should not get carried away by social movements in society. Some nonsense will be going on all the time. If you come to India, uh, the issues that shake the Indian society, that engage the Indian society very deeply, will be surprised, the issues. Some of the issues are non-issues. There should not have been issues in the first place, but they are the issues. Whether women can enter into a yoga temple or not, it is a non-issue. It is a non-issue. But it is made into a big issue. And even Supreme Court was engaged in all these uh, litigations. Eh? So one non-issue I, I told you, there are many such non-issues in Indian society. Your mind will be disturbed if you read newspaper, Indian newspaper. So many non-issues will be going on. Same thing in America also. In America, they are circulating a mug shot of the past president with a, with a number. The most unusual thing that happened in the American history he raised 7 million by that, Swamiji. Ah, the money is also raised by that. <laughs> so, there is an issue going on. And now whether he will be convicted before election or after the election, what, uh, these issues are engaging the people. And back in India, they create an issue and they get engaged by that. The social issues will be there. And uh, we should raise above on that. That is all Mithya. This Mithya thing in tomorrow's class I will discuss. Okay. You should ignore them. They are, they are not issues. They are non-issues. Only one thing. Love all. Whatever may be the other person calls himself or herself, we love all. Loving kindness. Love towards East. Love towards West. Love towards right, love towards left. This is Mundaka Upanishad. Brahma Pras, Brahma is love. Brahma Prasthat, Brahma Paschat, Brahma Dakshinataha, Brahma Uttarataha, Brahma Adhasthat, Brahma Urdhva. Brahma is love. So we love, we spread the love, send the message of love in all directions. We love all people. Whatever name they give to themselves, we love them all. Somebody says, Hey Swami, I am an atheist. I don't believe in God. So come, sit. What, what, can, what service can I do for you? 
So you love that person. Somebody says, I am a great devotee of God. Come, you love that person. This person doesn't know what is God. That person also doesn't know what is God. This person doesn't know what is love of God. He also doesn't know love of God. You are, uh, you are aware of all of that. But still, you love all. You may not love their ideas. You should not. You will be most confused person if you start loving the ideas of people. <laughs> okay? You don't love the ideas. You love the people. Okay? Every life form you love. That is the way. You should not be carried away by the issues that are prevalent in this society. These issues will be going on. Eh? So, in France the issue is whether Muslim students can have abaya or not. That is the issue is going on. Macron is struggling with it. So, something like that will be going on. We rise above all those things. We don't try to find a solution. What Vedanta says about it? Vedanta doesn't say anything about it. No. What physics says about it? It doesn't say anything about it, right? Vedanta is like physics.